Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. Dozens of people will be looking for places to live after a devastating fire in southeast Vancouver. Greg Harper joins us live from Champlain Heights with the latest. Greg? Jody, this is a tough way to start off the week for people that live here at this townhouse complex. This is in the Champlain Heights area of Vancouver. Behind me here is where most of the damage to this building is. A number of suites here have been gutted. Part of the roof is missing as well, and there's lots of water that remains on site here. All of this a reminder of what took place yesterday, and that is a huge fire that started around 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. It took firefighters hours to put it out. At one time, there was over 50 firefighters battling the blaze. At least 12 suites have been damaged, some of them severely. No one was injured in this fire. All the residents were able to get out of the building, including Clifford Crompton, who says it was a frantic scene. There was somebody up on the upper level who was, I guess, barbecuing or doing some outdoor cooking, and there was a mishap. Something either caught fire or, you know, something could happen. Spark could have caused it. But uh, from my understanding, that's what a lot of people are saying is, you know, it was a barbecue or somebody doing some outdoor cooking that probably caused the fire. So uh, some of the residents here have been told it may be two weeks to a month before they're able uh, to move back in. Some have been able to return and grab their belongings, but some haven't been able to do that as it's still unsafe inside their suites. Uh, what caused this fire? That's still under investigation. Jody? Luckily, nobody injured. Thank you very much. Greg Harper reporting live for us this morning from Champlain Heights. Ten people have been killed after their air taxi crashed in Alaska. A federal safety investigator says a pilot and nine passengers were on the plane when it went down. The Alaska state troopers say the twin-engine plane was fully engulfed in flames by the time firefighters arrived. It's not yet known if the flight was taking off or landing when it caught fire. Investigators are trying to determine whether pilot error is to blame for Saturday's deadly plane crash in San Francisco. Officials have determined the jet was traveling significantly below the target speed during its approach. Asiana Airlines says the pilot at the controls of the Boeing 777 had little experience flying that type of plane and was landing one for the first time at that airport. The probe is also looking into whether the airport or plane's equipment could have malfunctioned. Two teenage girls from China were killed. However, police are investigating whether one of them may have died after being run over by a rescue vehicle. The search continues today for about 40 people who are still unaccounted for after a train derailed and burst into flames in Quebec's eastern townships on Saturday. Federal investigators are hoping to start examining the wreckage in Lac Megantic now that all the fires at the site have been extinguished. Five people are confirmed dead, but that is a number that is expected to rise. The small town was devastated by the wreck. About 30 businesses were also destroyed. At least 40 people have been killed in Egypt as soldiers and police clashed with people protesting the removal of former President Mohamed Morsi. Today's gun battle followed disputes between the two sides where rocks and tear gas were used. Morsi supporters have been staging a sit-in outside a military building. It's believed gunmen attempted to storm the building at dawn, which ignited the violence. The Muslim Brotherhood is now urging Egyptians to rise up against the army after the deadly incident. It's one of the most well-attended daredevil events around the globe. And day one of the annual bull running festival in Pamplona, uh, Spain, has officially wrapped up. In keeping with tradition, runners in white garb, trimmed with red sashes and scarves, herd the bulls in the early morning through Pamplona's narrow medieval streets into the bull ring. There were only two injuries to report, and shockingly, no gorings. Gorings are common at the running with the bulls. Cyclists have been competing in the Tour de Delta for more than a decade, but this year's event was extra special. The race is now officially sanctioned by the sport's governing body, the International Cycling Union. That gives more weight to the results. Seattle native Steve Fisher won the men's race, completing the 151-kilometer course in three hours, 29 minutes. On the women's side, Winnipeg's Leah Kirchman took top spot. 
It's the only one in Western Canada, so we're very excited about it. It is, certainly allows our good Canadian athletes to get, garner these valuable um, UCI points, which gets them into gets Canada more entries into World Championships, Olympics, um, helps these guys get picked up by pro teams. So it's very valuable to, in the development of Canadian cycling. The Tour de Delta kicked off BC Super Week with upcoming cycling events at UBC Gastown, Burnaby, and White Rock. 6.36 on this Monday morning, Michelle McDermott with the morning off. We check in now with Kyle on traffic.